On this video, we will discover how you can attach a pallet to a forklift using agent-based modeling. So let's get started. So to achieve this, we can start with a typical source that generates a pallet, the same way we have always done it with discrete events models. And we will use, instead of a sys block, a waiting block. In this waiting block, we'll select a forklift that is in the state idle. So what is that? A forklift can be in four states in the most simple way. We don't want to complicate this more than necessary. So the idle state, move to product, attach to pallet, and move to destination. So any forklift that is idle can be seized by a pallet. So if the pallet finds a forklift, then it sends a message with itself as a message to the forklift that it found. So that will trigger this transition that receives a message of type pallet and it will move to the pallet. Then we will need to use a link to agents to connect the pallet to the forklift. And then you can release or free the, the pallet from the waiting block, which is called sys forklift. Now we will need the link to agents to have access to the pallet later. And also because the pallet will need to have access to the forklift. So we need to do this bi-directionally. So then the, the pallet will wait in the wait for forklift and the forklift will move to the pallet. When it arrives, it will attach to the pallet. So how do we do that? First, we will free the agent, which is the pallet, from the wait for forklift block. When it frees, it goes to the exit block and what you want to do is to change the population of the agent. So to do that, you do go to population and that's here's where we need access to the forklift and the pallets is the population of pallets that is available here in the forklift agent. Now we have access to a pallets population here and to change the population, we need to change it from a population that already exists. So that's why we need to create a custom population with pallets. And if you use a default population, this method will not work. So this is the first trick that you need to follow. So when it moves to the population, now the forklift, the pallet will not be in the, in the population in main, but instead it will be in the population inside the forklift. Now, the last trick that we need to apply is a jump to. So you will position the pallet in the origin of the forklift. So in here, just in the origin. And with this, the pallet will move to wherever the forklift will move. So now you just need to move to any destination that the pallet must go to. And when you arrive to the destination, you take the pallet to the enter block, which is the, this block here. And you can continue if you want to have a flow with a pallet that does other things. It's perfectly possible. This doesn't disrupt anything. And there's no problem. You can. Uh, this is kind of a replacement. All this stuff is kind of a replacement uh, for the sys block that you can find here. Not a total replacement because this is a very simplified model, but it could be a replacement if you want to create something like that. So when it arrives, also you need to disconnect the pallet. And now you don't have anything connected to the pallet link. And you also will need to change the population of the pallet again. So you can do pallet link dot get connected agent dot go to population. And here you will go to the population in main, main dot pallet. You will need to do this to change the population again, because then the pallets are not with the forklift anymore. They are wherever you put the pallets. Now you can disconnect the pallet from here. So finally, 
the forklift becomes idle again and can seek for a for, for a pallet that is inside the sys forklift weight block. And if there is something, it grabs it and you fire an event for the state chart that will trigger this transition and you go back to the same thing again. So this is how you do it and that's it.